And those numbers were down from two years prior, when there was 12% of ODSP clients living in subsidized housing, and 7% of OW clients living in subsidized housing. So between four years ago and two years ago, you know, 2% of OW clients disappeared, and 3% of ODSP clients disappeared out of, out of community housing. So how did that work? There should have been more going into community housing, not less. You know? So that's why you see more disabled and, 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 and poor people, you know, in the homes of campus. You know, there's many people on OW that really should be on ODSP because they haven't got the wherewithal to look for, them, to seek, to, to land, you know, and, and to keep a job. You know, they should be on ODSP. The guy that wants to pretend, oh, they're able to work, but you know, when you look at them, you talk to them, you know that they can't keep a job. You know, they're, they're undiagnosed, or at least diagnosed, you know, they haven't been diagnosed with a mental disability, but, you know, but they can't hold a job. And that, that's, you know, homelessness should be a disability. You know, consider a disability. You know, people need to be housed. You know, not necessarily in houses, in apartments, in rooms. You know, we got a problem with, 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 with some landlords when they want to charge fifteen hundred dollars a room, and you know, but put an ad out and say room for rent five hundred dollars, and then the person goes to say, oh, well, we got to share the room with two other people. What do you mean? You know, that's not right. People should not be forced to, sh to share a room. You know, the government's trying to get people to even go, you know, to co-own homes. You know, there, there's a problem with that, though. Because people that co-own homes have a problem with the other people they co-own the home with. Then you have having to go to court to get the force the other person to sell the house so they can get their money back out. You know, when, when, when people rent an apartment with somebody else, a friend or something, that friend turns abusive, and they can't move out and kick the other person out, because they can't afford it. They're stuck in an abusive situation, you know? And that's not right. They don't want to talk about that. They want to pretend everything's good and everything's hunky dory and everything's rosy. And it's not, you know? We need more people speaking up about what's going on. And people, we need you to learn. We need you to learn the numbers and the facts and speak up. Because the government isn't giving you the facts and the numbers. If the government said, oh, we're giving all these new clients a raise of $60 a month this year, you'd say, what the hell is that? But because it said, oh, we're giving them a 4.5% increase, it sounds like a lot, doesn't it? It's a job of $60, $34, $34 for the basic needs, and $26 for, for the shelter. $582, $582 a disabled person can get to rent a place to live. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. It's disgusting. How is that fair? It's not fair. They need nothing wrong. You know, being disabled is not a crime. We should not be treated like criminals. Being poor is not a crime. The crime is the people that keep people in poverty. How about we make some laws and say, if you create poverty, you go to jail. You keep you you enable poverty, you go to jail. You contribute to poverty, you go to jail. You know? You do nothing to eradicate poverty, you go to jail. Those should be the ones. You know, if the police wanted to do something, they'd arrest the politicians for failing to supply the necessities of life. You know? If somebody forced their dog to live in a tent in the winter at 32 below freezing, you'd say that's animal abuse. Guess what? We're all animals. We're animals. It's animal abuse. Humans are animals related to the apes. Look it up, Google it, Google it, find out. Homelessness is no, the only choice when it comes to homelessness. It's not a choice of the people being homeless. It's the choice of the government to not increase their benefits or the minimum wage that keeps them homeless. That's the, that's the choice of the government. That's the government's choice. It's their legislation. It's their policy. It's not the citizens making up their mouths for ODSP and for disability clients for welfare. It's the government. The provincial government, you know? When they come from your neighborhood, when they come from your neighborhood, you will understand. When the 1% says, you know what, I want that block. Let's buy some buildings, run them into the ground. You know, of course everybody ought to get out of the buildings. And then we can have it for ourselves. You know? Screw the friggin' poor people. 
screw them. We're not building anything for them. We just want their land. We want their land. That's what we want. You know? How many communities have been disrupted and destroyed for Congo? You know, Regent Park was a trauma housing complex. And you know, the number of units that they had before they started doing the renovations and the gentrification of Regent Park never increased when they, when they signed the deals to build the taller buildings. The number of trauma housing units did not increase. The extra units they put up are, 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 are rentals and high income rentals. The luxury metals, you know? So the number of houses, strong housing did not, even though strong housing property, that buildings are strong housing property, they did not get more units. Now, if you want to house more people, you've got to have more units, you know? Putting, wasting money renting hotel rooms when you should be building buildings that people can afford is a waste of money. Building shelters, more and more shelters to keep people Wait till they put the middle class in shelters because the middle class loves shelters so much. Oh, it's awesome. We built shelters. Yay. Well, let's hope they put the middle class in them soon. Start putting them in a certain set. Then maybe they'll fight back for themselves and not say, listen, we're struggling, so why should you get more? Because we're too lazy to fight for ourselves, so you shouldn't get more. You know? We're not going to go out the street and block it and demand that our employers pay us more money. No, so you guys shouldn't do that either. No, we're happy to live in poverty. We're happy to go to the food bank. You know, there's some middle class in the food banks now. What the hell? Ten dollar a day daycare instead of people being able to afford their own daycare. What the hell? We'll pull over their eyes there, eh? Many people don't even go through that's a failing program. So you know, you get you got ten dollar a day daycare and that falls. Now your daycare costs are even higher, but your money didn't increase. Your money never went up. So now you gotta pay even more on less money. Do you get it? Do you get it? A winter tire tax credit. A staycation tax credit. You know? We're not for the people getting away with paying no taxes. Taxes are what keep the roads in good shape. Taxes are what keep the sewers in good shape. Taxes are what keep the power on. You know, corporations don't pay taxes. The billionaires ain't paying taxes. You know, are, are, are the police going after them to protect the 99%? No, they're not. They're protecting the one percent. They're not protecting anybody else. You know, you know, other countries, the army goes in and takes over from the politicians because the politicians, you know, they do corruption, right? But here in Canada, it's acceptable. It's acceptable by the military and the police. You know? Good on it. We need people to stand up, you know? It's all right. Many disabled people, many disabled people can't even use food banks because of gastrointestinal issues. Many are diabetic. Many have IBS, Crohn's, celiac disease, other things. So when they say that food banks help the most vulnerable, they're lying! They're lying! I have severe IBS. I can't use food banks. The only thing I can get from food banks is some soft potatoes, maybe, and some carrots, and a rotten. Everything else I can't have. I have to cook my own roast beef and cut up the chunks and put it in the freezer so that I sandwich me. Because I can't buy deli meat, I can't buy packaged meat. You know? I'm gluten free, I'm lactose free. Severe IBS. Some things are, I use the FODMAP diet to control my IBS, but some things on the FODMAP diet I still can't have because of my acid reflux, my GERD, my damaged esophagus, you know, my Barrett's disease, you know. So I can't have tomatoes, I can't have citrus. So my diet's expensive, you know. It's a struggle. I eat healthy. But you know what? I have to ration my food. That's why I'm so skinny. Can you not see that? Can you not see that? These are my emotional support dogs. My doctor, you know, recommended I have to get an emotional support dog. First one they had, medication, it screwed up his head. You know? So now they got a second one for the emotional support dog along with. But we don't get, we don't get it, uh, uh, we don't get an allowance for the emotional support dog. Or, 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 or,
You know, healthcare should be regulated for pets. You know, veterinary clinics should be regulated. The government allowed to take from you before you stand up. How much more? They're destroying the public healthcare system around you. Your own of the won't be very good in a couple more years if it's allowed to continue and allowed to degrade. Your own card won't do it. It'll be your wallet, your bank card. Many people can't afford that. Just look at the U.S. Just look at the U.S. That's what they want here in Canada. Doug Ford, remember he? He praised Trump. Remember that? Do you remember Doug Ford praising Trump? You don't remember that? No? Well, where is our, where, where, what, what's, what, how can people just let this go on? You're all 99 percenters. You're not the one percent. You guys, it's up to you to fight back. It's up to you to stand up. It's up to you to raise your voice. You want good education for your family, friends, or whatever else, grandkids, whatever. You better start standing up. Say, pay the teachers more. You know, why is it up to all the healthcare workers to do a protest? And say, same with the teachers. They do a protest. And the public sits back and don't join in. You know, when people go to protest, you know, if you look at our protest event, I ask people to bring their phone to make sure they got down and charge their phone so they can go live. Because you know, you go to protest, there's you know, 6,000 people there. And you only see a handful of people with their phone. So they're not spreading the message exponentially. But if you go live, you know, on this video, you got six people watching it, then you get shared, more people watch it. You spread the message farther. You know? Homelessness is not a choice. It is on a part of the government, but it's not a choice of the, of the homeless people. When a single person on welfare only gets $733 a whole check, and the city of Toronto says a bare bones room costs $1,117, it's not rocket science, it's simple math. You can't rent a $1,117 room with only $733. And if you did, you'd have no money for food, a phone, transportation, laundry cleaning, laundry money, cleaning supplies, you know. God forbid you want to go have a coffee if you're a disabled person. You know? Buy a piece of clothing. Or buy a piece of clothing. Yeah, exactly. I had a pop clothing a long time. You know, some of the necessities I ran into shoes in there. Right? But now, I've been using a gun trailer more and more. I'm now eligible for my second wheelchair. This one's now five years old. You know, I got it originally for quality of life purposes, but now it's I, I rely on it more and more. You know, I'm in constant pain every day. I go to bed in pain. I wake up in pain. That's why I'm trying to get paid. I saw my second me doctor via a Zoom meeting there uh, last Friday, and they uh, okayed my request for me. They just have to go back to uh, make sure, the first one has to go make sure that they looked into everything for my pain. But I've already been in the pain clinic, and they already said there's nothing they could do. But I got chronic pain, you know. I can't take pain colors because of my IBS, you know. So, this is my last chance. We need somebody that's going to take this fight over to me after I'm gone. Who's going to stand up and stand up to the police and block the street for our poor disabled people? Who's going to have the balls to do it? Hey, I had my sex change five years ago. I'm still so got the balls to do it. $10. That's what the 4.5% increase by ODSP shelter allowance up to. $582. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? How many of you, how many of you people have family that's disabled? They got $582 for rent. Isn't that fantastic? Why are you pitching to the government? You know, en masse, on the streets, because they're ignoring your emails, they just tell them to spam. They ignore your petitions, they pretend they don't exist, you know? It's just sad that this is allowed to continue, and continue, and continue. And everything gets degraded for people, you know? We need, we need a one world government with a prime directive of Earth life over profits, and also, that nothing can change unless a better program that benefits Earth life comes into being first. Uh, so that's what we do. We need more and more people doing things. Yeah. So, a few years ago, Denise Taylor got off of Queen's Park and said that ODSP will be your clients. You know, 
or there's people that say another $500 and OW clients say another $800 or something. And Todd Smith stood up and said, well, we gave them a 1.5% increase. They want to come back with a dollar, man. That's how they feel people, you know? Like that was supposed to be the end of the bill. It was $10. The 1.5% increase in 2018 was $10. So it was. This increase is 4.5% increase this year, just this month. Some people, some disability advocates want to use paid medical assistance and dying to fear on their poor disabled people. But that's wrong to do because some vulnerable disabled people, you know, with mental health issues and stuff, will believe that, you know? And then it, it, it causes them stress. And not only stress them enough, it causes sleeping disorders, it causes anxiety, it causes gastrointestinal it causes ulcers. Fear mongering is not a good thing. And no matter anything that fear mongers should not be allowed. You know, disability, poverty, it's a separate issue for me, it's welfare. A single person on welfare gets $733 for their whole check, $390 for rent, and 343 for their basic needs. Can't afford if the city says foster us a, a, a roof, a bare bone roof. The city of Toronto says a roof costs $1,117 a month. That's what they say it costs. So why is only a child not demanding drug for an increase or ESP or W benefits? Why is it she? Because she's been bought off by a one percent and drug for it? You're not afraid of going to the jail. She doesn't care about the same old poor people yeah. living in Toronto? The most important man is you know? talking to me right now. She lets the communities get overrun. They let them let the robbers buy up properties and keep them for 10 years and run all the other properties into the ground so they can build condos. Kick everybody out of their communities. Just wait that happens to you. When that Richard Pimpson wants your neighborhood and comes for your neighborhood, will you stand up and fight then? Will you? You know? The disabled person is ran a victory again a victory. They should not automatically become homeless and treat it like a criminal and shuffle them into a shelter because they're disabled and poor. You know, they should be able to rent another place in their community. They shouldn't be driven away from family, friends, community, supports, doctors, whatever. You know, there's a problem with people being forced out of communities and away from the doctors, where there's a shortage of doctors. A lot of control, a lot of people, I think there's 250,000 people in Ontario have no doctor, or 2.5 million, I think it was 2.5 million. You know, I'm in pain. It hurts to be here. I'd rather not be here. But nobody else is fighting for us. Nobody else is fighting in the streets for poor and disabled people. Nobody else is fighting in the streets against poverty. Oak Cap fought holding. They fell apart. Ontario Coalition against poverty is no more. They folded last year. ACORN doesn't do an effective protest. You know, they don't block the street and, and, and demand more money for poor and disabled people. They stand on the sidewalk and, and uh, and the population just walks by, they come over here all the time at Bay and uh, uh, Carlton. They protest there all the time, by the Alphabet, on the sidewalk. When you protest on the sidewalk, people just walk by, they don't listen, they don't care about your message. But as soon as you block the street, people stop when you're walking by, they listen. You know? Well, well that's exactly right, why are you telling the trend? Well, no, no, what do you mean no? What do you mean no? There's no public issue. This is not part of your shift, this is not. We're legally allowed to protest. We're legally allowed to protest. This is a protest. You don't know what a protest is? Google it. Look it up. You should do that to report your phone right now. Yeah, that's what it is. Do not see all the people. Protest? Can you not see everybody here that support the protest? We can, eh? We can see them. So what? You think we all got mental health issues or something? Well, then why are you here? Why are you talking to me? Well, you can see what's happening. And if we're putting it around you, you can listen. You've been standing there listening. You know what? A single person on welfare gets $733 for the whole check. Right? $390 for rent and $3.2 for the basic meat. $733. The city of Toronto says a room costs $1,117. Right? Right? Okay, so what do you think we're going to do? Why do you think we're Yeah, we're close right here to do it. Because we're educating the public in the matter. We're doing that Queen's part, they don't care. You know what? Everybody there is on the same page. They don't report it accurately. They don't tell us why they're there. 
Say they want to be honest, doubt it. Twice they report that we left the house and they're working their life. They want to keep working, they want to get back. You know? So, you know, we find that we put this on the sidewalk, people walk by, they don't listen. But when you step on the street, people stop, they're on the, on the sidewalk, what they're doing there, listening, they're listening, right? Some of them are pulling out their phones and filming us. You know? That's how we get our message out. That's how we get our message out. So, yes, I know, but you're, you're working for the 1% or the 99%. Okay, so you gotta arrest me for protesting. No, you know what? You know what? That, 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 you know what? They all have done this. You were, you were arresting me before, in the past, they have done that, for doing the same thing, for protesting. When I went to court and I asked the judge to clarify protest laws, the crowd would do the charge. Is that what you want to do again, just to get me off the road? You want to cause me a headache, just to try to get me off the road? You want to cause me a criminal headache? No. No, I, you, 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 we're allowed to do this. We're allowed to block the street protest. You know, we are allowed. We are allowed. Google it. Google it. The, the police do not issue permits for protests. No, they do not. They do not. They, no, they do not. We, they do not issue. No, they don't. No, they don't. You know what? I'm not here to argue about this. I'm here to do this protest. And you know what? You, you, you see how I'm shaking? You see that? This is what they're doing to me. This is not yeah, This is what you're doing to me. Trying to create a false narrative. Exactly. They're trying to create a false narrative. You know, it's passive aggressiveness that they're trying to give me a upset. And they are working for me, right? And I just started swearing at them. That's their systematic yeah. process. Well, you don't, you don't have to be here. You can let us do our protest. You can let us finish talking to the public. You know, public safety, you're not stop. We're all safe here. We're all safe here. We're protecting us. No, we uh, protect us. No, you're not. You're trying to protect society, right? No, you're trying to protect trade. You're trying to protect the 1%. You're trying to protect the corporation. Right. You're trying to protect the corporation. You know, and nothing's enough. Speak the truth in your speech. Okay? Until 2 o'clock. It's not, it's, it's, it's not unreasonable. It's not sitting on. So what? We're not going to do a three hour protest. It's a three hour protest. Yeah. It's listed on Facebook. It's all the flags that we put up there. Got people ripped down. Yeah, at three o'clock we can't leave. Can you not? No, it's a two o'clock. So it's one ten. Fifteen more minutes. So leave us alone for fifteen minutes. Thank you. So you leave us alone for fifteen minutes, eh? Thank you. Oh, uh, see? Oh, I wouldn't say that. We'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're not allowed to protest against poverty. You know, it looks bad on the city. It looks bad that the police don't stand up for the disabled and poor people. And we have to do it ourselves. That's what it is. It looks bad. You know? Yeah, exactly. They're only 1%. You know, they're the council guard. You know, protecting the interests of the 1%. They're, they're, the police, you know, the police, are, are, are neutralizing themselves so that when the 99% unite and rise up against the 1% to take back the wall, you know, they're there to shoot them all down. That's why they're neutralizing themselves. Kid yourself now. Kid yourself now. You know, they can get drones. I know helicopters are more expensive. And the helicopters can be used to, you can arm them better. They don't want us to get a message out. They want to interrupt this possibly. We're here to talk about poverty. You know, the shelter allowance for disabled people on ODSP just went up to $582. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? No, it's not. You can't rent a one bedroom apartment with many disabled people in a wheelchair or with mobility needs. Needs. They need a one bedroom apartment. You know? You can't go up and walk up with a, with a wheelchair. You know? You ain't climbing stairs in a wheelchair or living in a basement apartment with a wheelchair. You know? You need a one bedroom apartment. That's what you need. You know, to say that is anything else is ludicrous. You know? You can't rent a one bedroom apartment for 582. You can't rent a one bedroom apartment for the whole ODSP amount, the new amount, the new total amount for ODSP is $1,368. You know? A one bedroom apartment now, they say, it goes for $22 to $2,400. $22 to $2,400 if you Google it for the average market of one bedroom apartment. Average market rent. $22 to $2,400. How is a disabled person supposed to afford that with a whole check of $1,368? $13, $13, eh? 
You can't do it. You know why I started Poop and Technique Organized People Building Funding in 2018? You know? The disability uh, amounts was $497 for rent. $497 in 2018. Now it's $582. It's disgraceful. You know, we started on I started Poop and Technique Organized People Building Funding in 2018. Say, Poop, we're here. We want 100% increase. You know, we don't want the 10% increase. We want 100% increase. In 2018, because it made sense. Because you can double the 497 rental allowance up to 998, and a one bedroom apartment you can rent for 11 to 1200 dollars. But the rent has doubled since then. It's gone up. You know, you can't do it. People, society exists to help and take care of each other, especially when we are or become vulnerable. We will all be vulnerable throughout our lives, and those who put their selfishness first should not expect help. You know, just this month resulted in 34 more dollars for basic needs and 26 dollars added to the shelter allowance. The shelter allowance for ODSP clients is now 582 dollars. You know, a one bedroom apartment in Toronto is 22 to 2400 dollars. It stays on Google. You know, the city of Toronto low balls at, 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 at 18 something. But you know, even with the full check of 1386, no, 1368, a disabled person couldn't rent. An average market rent of an apartment, one bedroom apartment in Toronto. Really. Even if it was doubled, they would struggle so bad, they wouldn't be able to afford a lot of food or anything. So if you double, if you double the 1368 up to 2736, and you have to pay 22 or 2400 dollars for rent, it's only going to leave you three to five hundred dollars for food, uh, your necessities, your your uh, your phone, your your, your laundry. You know, um, it's just shameful what goes on. You know, people on, on disability deserve to be treated better. You know, they, they, they deserve to be treated with some dignity, you know, some compassion, some empathy, you know. And no, we don't get much empathy. We're not getting any empathy from the police officers behind us that want to shut us down. They have no empathy for us. They have no compassion for us. Their compassion is for the city. Their compassion is for the drivers in the cars. That's their compassion. They're worried about the traffic. You know, they want to get down to Caravan. You know, Caravan is a distraction, right? But the real issues there, right? the crime goes down. But you don't hear the politicians tell you that, do you? But you can Google it. You can Google it. Google it. Say, if, if poverty goes down, does crime go down? And you'll, you'll, you'll find out it does, you know? But no, they just want to tell you that, oh, we need a bigger police budget. But a bigger police budget every year, you know, in many police stations all across Canada, has resulted in more criminal organizations in Canada than ever before. Every year, the number of criminal groups goes up in Canada. You know, they know they exist. It's there. It's, if you Google it, it's there. But they allow it to exist. Isn't that nice? And they say they fight crime. They fight crime. And they want to treat us like criminals because we're here caring about people and protesting for more money. They want to treat us like criminals. They want to say that we're criminals. You know? Say that we're causing mischief when we're protesting. It's legal to protest. They're trying to take that right away, as you can see. And you know, soon you won't be able to protest. You know, they don't stop. They don't stop uh, the protests uh, for education or, or, or for for uh, healthcare or for the environment and threaten the people and lock them up because they're doing a protest, do they? But they threaten disabled poor people with that. We're gonna lock you up if you don't get off the street. We don't want you to have three hours on the street. We want to control how long you're on the street. You know? It's wrong. Stand up, wake up. You're 99%. Doug Ford don't care about you. Lady your child don't care about you. And she has lip service. When your education system and your healthcare system is all going to hell, you know? It's all being ripped apart so they can privatize it. They don't care about you. Well, Lady your child never talks up about healthcare. She never talks up about the education. But thank God she's doing photo ops in Ossington, and over there, and over here, and over there. It's good to see her in the news that she's doing photo ops. That really helps the community, you know, the photo ops. That lets people in poverty photo ops. Bullshit it does. You know? It does nothing. She goes into these communities that are going to be gentrified in a few years, and all the citizens are going to get kicked out of their communities, and their neighborhoods. 
and she pretends she cares about them, right? That's not right. But then we have to compete with the other people making all the noise down there. So that's why we did it here at this interview. You know, we've been here before. We've done this intersection here before. We've done Young and Down Nest before. We've done the Queen Street Press before. We've done Board Street a couple times. You know, but we, we, we don't get to hear people to hear our message. You know, that's why we still here on the street. Because the media won't tell you what's going on accurately. They want, you know, Doug Ford saying the best thing a disabled person can do is get a job. You know? What kind of fucking shit is that? You know? Many disabled people can't work. I couldn't hold a job. I got too many health issues. I got severe IBS. I can't get to it. You know? It's ludicrous. And the jobs that disabled people can't get certainly do not pay a thrive of a livable income. You know? People say, oh, livable income. Livable income is a misnomer. Because you can live still in poverty. It does nothing. You need a thrivable income. People need a thrive of Lincoln. The middle class better start fighting for higher wages instead of more tax breaks. You know, because it's the, the tax breaks, you know, they defeat the purpose of having a good society. It doesn't pay for the infrastructure. Corporations ain't paying money. Our roads are a mess. The electricity goes out every now and again. Our electricity grid is not that great. You know, there's lots of flooding. The sewer system doesn't work good. You know, there's so many issues in Canada. And all they want to do is distract you with sports, with concerts, with whatever they can throw at you. Brandon circuses. Back to the Roman Coliseum days, you know? People were kicked off, off the common grounds back in the 12th century, up to the 15th century line. You know? It's not right. People driven out of their communities, in their neighborhoods, so that the rich can take them over and then move in more rich people. It's not right. You know? Don't people matter? Don't it doesn't every human matter? Are we not all human? Are we not all human beings? You know? We're human first, you know? And everybody every, every human should care about other humans. And not caring about other humans is not inclusion. You know, the, the, the one percent want division of every sort, religion, ethnicity, you know, race, you know, your sexual order, your preference, whatever. They they want to divide you as much as they can, you know, so that you can't unite. So we have so many issues. You know, we have a problem. Nobody wants to talk about this one. I'm gonna talk about this right now. You know, when you have religious people that are zealots, you know, and uh, or people that are transphobic or LGBT phobic in the healthcare system, they might not give you the treatment you need or mis or may mistreat you intentionally, you know, because they don't they don't think you should exist. So who's vetting the healthcare workers? Who's vetting the PSWs that come to your house? You know, I have trust issues. I can't even trust PSWs because I've had problems in the past. And the two that showed up at my door with my work were there, they're transphobic right off the bat. So how can I have a transphobic person in my apartment doing PSW work? They're not going to help me. They're going to try to screw me up. You don't get it, do you? you got to look beyond the little pictures. you know? you got to think about the overall picture. You know? We got these these religious wars going on and stuff. You know, Ukraine. The Ukraine is the chessboard. The war is between NATO and Russia. And you know what NATO is just a tool the US uses to gain what they want for the US. That's what NATO is. And they want more money to put in NATO so that the states can pay for more. They go into countries, their CIA, they stage coups, overturn governments, steal all the all the resources. That's what the CIA helps do. That's what they do. They all this problem around the world. It's not just happening. It's, it's orchestrated. It's orchestrated. Just like poverty in Canada is legislated. It's legislated. We have the legal amount, the low income crime amount. If you look it up and Google it, you'll see it won't hardly cover the rent of an average market one bedroom apartment. And the whole thing. It won't leave any money for food. Won't leave you money for transportation. Won't leave you money for communication. Won't leave you money for laundry and cleaning supply. Won't leave you money to buy new clothes if your clothes get you know, Or something breaks in your apartment, like your microwave or your toaster oven or something. You know? They're just out of luck. What time is it? You know? 125. Half an hour left. The only choice when it comes to homelessness is the choice of the government. Because it's certainly not the choice of the homeless people. You know? Many homeless people are on these BROW. And when they're not homeless, they don't even get the full amount. They get a street allowance, you know? And they couldn't rent a room if they want 
The trial, trial says that for a room it's $1,117. And a person on OW welfare, you know, the charity works, welfare, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> As you can see by all the homelessness camps all around Toronto, it's not working, you know, it's a misnomer. You know, we have a problem, $733 for welfare, and a room is $1,117, you know. They want to put everybody in shelters, but there's no housing for them. And there's no room in the shelters. So they want to build more shelters. And all the middle class are all for shelters. So they want percent to see how much the, want, the middle class love shelters. And soon enough, put the middle class in shelters. And let's put the middle class in shelters too. You know? There's no comfort in your neighborhood. No comfort in your neighborhood. Got to have that dollar asset in the bank. You know, it's got to look good on paper. Pardon me, the economy might be empty, but you know, it looks good on paper. That's to the wealth, you know? Shoe boxes. You know, down the road, when all those condos downtown become obsolete because people want to park their flying car on their balcony, you know? There's no foresight, is there? You know? We're going to get flying cars one day. And all those condos will be obsolete, you know? You see, people won't have to live in downtown cities anymore. You know? Right away, idiot! This beat just went up to $786. And that's not enough money for disabled people to live on. Especially those with gastro testing issues that are good free, not just free, and the food is more expensive. You know, if you have an abortion support dog, and you got vet bills, then you gotta pay for food for the dogs. You know, these are necessary things. You know, food is necessary. You know, food banks were started 50 years ago, you know, as a temporary stopgap measure. Well, it's time to end the temporary and close the gap, you know. People are advocating that, you know, that the stores don't throw out food, you know, instead give it to homeless people, want to slap the pigs, you know, want to pretend that, that, that uh, poor disabled people or whatever, you know, they're just animals to be slapped like pigs, you know. They don't want to advocate to get more money so they can buy the food when it's fresh. You know, they don't actually want to do that. Because, you know, eating fresh food might be healthy. You know, we have a problem. That my worker into my building, and she has a key for my room. So, you know, my worker was here earlier and spoke about uh, PSWs and stuff. You know, they're being overworked. Eh? You know, case workers are being overworked, and they can't. They, they, it's hard for them to get everything accomplished that they need to accomplish for their clients because they're overworked. You know, people are falling between the cracks. You know, not all, not all uh, homeless people. You know, many homeless people. You know, our invisible homeless. They don't talk about the invisible homeless, the people who are couch surfing, you know, or staying in somebody's basement, you know, or temporarily, you know, or, or, uh, or, or, you know, or those who are sleeping in, in tents in the parks that don't do drugs or alcohol. They don't want to tell you about those people. They want to just slaughter all disabled and poor people by trying to say that, you know, everybody that's homeless is addicted to drugs. You know, many aren't. You know, I was at a homeless academy yesterday, and uh, sure, some of the people smoke cannabis, but you know, it's medical cannabis, right? But there was nobody smoking hard drugs here. You know? Nobody. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's propaganda. They were, watch out, shall we? They let that car through. $1,368 $1 is what the total OBSP benefits are. And if you add the cannabis disability benefit, of $200, and by the way, not all OTSP clients are going to get that because it's only going to be eligible to the disabled people who have the disability tax credit. And it's also going to cut off at age 65. You know, it's just like OTSP cuts off at age 65. You know, they think your disabilities disappear at age 65. You know? And how do you believe? Just like they think autism goes away at age 18 and they lose their passport funding and stuff. You know? It's just, you know, it's ludicrous. You know? It's like when I go to the hospital, you know, and, and I'm admitted to the hospital and they can't feed me, you know. And when they release, I said to the doctor, I said, listen, you got doctors in this hospital that diagnose people with gastrointestinal issues. And they go, yeah. I said, you got dietitians in this hospital that help people, you know, create a diet for the gastrointestinal issues. He says, yeah. I said, so why doesn't the kitchen, you know, uh, cater to people with gastrointestinal issues? No answer. But every hospital in, 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 in Toronto is like that. I've been to so many different hospitals and I've been to so many different hospitals. And I can't get fed. I have to get people on the street to bring me food. You know? I have to get people outside the hospital to bring me food into the hospital 
because they can't feed me because of my gastrointestinal issue. Even though they're diagnosed and I have a dietitian, the hospital can't seem to feed me. What's up with that? So then I can't even stay in the hospital to get treated properly because they can't feed me. You know? Everything's wrong in our society when nobody wants to fight back and everybody believes the propaganda. You know? Homelessness is not a choice. Not homeless people, anyway. Homelessness is a choice of the government. It's legislative poverty. You know? That's what this protest is called today. It's called End the Legislative Poverty Now Protest. You know? We want disabled people to have average market rent money by postal code so they're not forced out of their neighborhoods and communities if they're rent evicted or dumb evicted. You know, or evicted for any other reason. They should still be allowed to rent a place. They shouldn't automatically become homeless and forced into a shelter. That's ludicrous. That's not, that's not showing empathy. That's not showing any compassion. You know? Does nobody care about disabled and poor people? Does nobody care about your human, your fellow humans anymore? You know? I need you to stand up and start fighting for poor and disabled people. Seriously standing up and fighting for poor person. I'm getting tired. I'm in pain. You know, I'm, 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 my second maid doctor I had an appointment with last Friday, and they okayed my decision and my request to get made. They agreed to it. So I got one more step to go before I get made. You know, and there's no way you're going to be fighting back to that, but I know it. Old cap folded, you know, a, a terry portion of these poverty is folded up. There's no more of that. There's nobody fighting for poor and disabled people. So when I get medical assistance and dying, I won't be here to fight for anybody either. So who's going to fight? Which one of you people are going to stand up and fight for disabled and poor people? Which one of you will take my place and block a street against poverty? Which one of you? Will it be you? Will it be you? Maybe it's going to be you. Who's going to do it? Well, somebody has to do it. You know? You got to fight for the little person. You know? It's like they used to say, you know? You take care of the, 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 the pennies and the nickels and the dollars take care of themselves. Well, it's like that. You take care of the poor and the disabled and the rich take care of themselves. You know? The middle class, you know, are against us getting more money because they're struggling, you know? And they're using food banks, you know? But they don't want to fight for themselves. They say, well, how can you get more money when we're struggling? Well, that's up to you, able-bodied, middle-class people, to fight for more for yourself, you know? Don't deny us our right to fight for more money because you're unwilling to fight for more money. You're all part of the 99% here, all of you. There's no one percenters walking around these streets right now. You know? Are you a one percenter, sir? Are you? Are you a one percenter? Are you a one percenter? You know? Well, Doug Ford doesn't care about you then. If you're not a one percenter, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about your education, doesn't care about your health care, doesn't care about whether you'll be able to afford it in the future. You know, he wants to privatize everything. Remember that a few years ago he was praising Donald Trump? You know, that's Doug Ford for you. You know? People don't want to speak about that. People want to talk, talk about the truth. You know? We have a problem here in Canada. Everybody believes Canada is such a good place. But we got homeless people everywhere. All across Canada. It's happening all across the world, you know. Everywhere there's homelessness. People force out of their, out of their countries. You know? And it's for what reason? It's because of the 1% munitions oligarchs. The 1% ammunition and, and, and weaponry manufacturers, oligarchs, who are benefiting from the war, who are making money off the war, who are profitizing off the wars, you know? And they don't pay taxes. They don't help with the infrastructure, you know? They don't, help, they don't help your society flourish. They don't care about your society. They don't care about their workers. They don't care if their workers use a food bank, you know? It's up to you to start fighting back. Each and every one of you, you know? You gotta start realizing that, you know, the community, if you live in a community where there's low-rise buildings, and it's, uh, you know, not a bad neighborhood, they'll come and get it. The rich will come and get it. They'll buy them some buildings, you know, start letting them run into the ground, board them up, then buy the neighbor's houses, get properties depreciated, 
then buy them up. You know, everybody's gonna end up leaving that community. Community destroyed, people lose their friends. You know? That's what happens. You know? So that's what happens. My getting a little Seven hundred and thirty three dollars is what a single person on welfare gets. They call it old gummy, but carry it works. But it's welfare. Seven hundred and thirty three dollars. You know, and then if they're homeless, they don't even get that whole amount. They only get partial. But you can't rent what the city says a room cost in Toronto. The city of Toronto says a room cost one thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. One thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. So how is a person on welfare is supposed to rent that? They can't. So why you're sleeping in the parks? That's why you're in shelters. Because they can't afford to live anywhere. And the government wants to pretend it's okay. The society wants to believe it's okay. Why is that? Whether it happens to you, or your kid, or your son, or your wife, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend. You know? Whether it happens to your loved one, your parent. You know? Many seniors are becoming homeless. I'm so sick and tired of seeing old seniors sleeping on the sidewalk, shuffling down the sidewalk, barefoot, dirty, because no one's taking care of them. We have a problem. It's not right. I shouldn't have to do this. You know, I started to protect the ODSPLW funding in 2018 to specifically demand that ODSPLW be increased 100% double. You know? It was like proof we're here, we want a 100% increase. Fuck your 3%. The 3% in 2018 was $11, seven to eleven dollars That was it. You know? It was nothing. The increase this year, a 4.5% increase this year. It's $60. Only $26 more for the rent, which brought the rent allowance up for disabled people to $582. $582 for a disabled person to rent a one-bedroom apartment. Do you know where there's a one-bedroom apartment you can rent for $582? Do you know? Anybody know? Do you know? Does anybody know? Where can you get a one-bedroom apartment for a disabled person for $582? You know? So why isn't the your child talking about this? Why isn't the living your child talking about this? Because she's too busy doing photo ops and community events. She's another John Tory. Rip the page. You know, just because you change the puppet doesn't mean you change the puppeteer. She's out here today in pain, and many people are in pain hidden. People hidden in their homes, disabled, elderly, unemployed, laid off, depressed, delusional, poor, malnourished. The average person is suffering. And I look at your faces and I see your misery. And our joy is short-lived, tied to fulfilling our addictions, of filling our hunger temporarily. And I know the average person doesn't like this. And you know it too. But we're afraid. We're afraid of standing out here alone and getting dragged off and beaten, maybe disappeared like the average missing and murdered indigenous women or girl. When we have poverty, we see the world grow worse and desperate as the hunger of a person leads to the weakness of their ethics. A hungry person is a lot easier to convince to kill. A hungry person is a lot easier to go down a dark road. Addiction, violence, mental and physical health exacerbation of disabilities, pre-existing mental health problems, new and emerging mental health problems. We're not asking from you the impossible. We're asking from you the foundational. And so you have to ask yourself, am I going to let the poorest of me, the poorest of we, die? Or will I stand for a world where the drop in the bucket is used to make a world where we can stand loving, where we can stand fed, where we can be housed and happy because we have the homes, we have the folks, but you know what we're lacking? We're lacking you. We're lacking your hearts, 
your will, and your time. So if you want to stand, now's the time to stand. Thank you, Mitchell. Mitchell also ran for mayor the last two elections. Same as me. Because we want to bring awareness to this situation. But we didn't fit the political narrative that what we said want the public to hear. You know, they don't want the public to hear what we have to say. That's why I want everyone invited on the, on the big debates. You know, when the media hypes up the same six or eight candidates, when there's a hundred candidates, but they only hype up the same six or eight candidates, that's called undocumented third party advertising and gerrymandering because they're influencing the election. You know? And it's all because the 1% are putting the money out for their advertising. You know? They don't want the public to hear that homelessness is not a choice. You know? They, you know how, many, how many politicians in the last fair election fear about the people are using the TTC and now complain about gridlock? Like Olivia Chow. You know? Complaining about gridlock. But how? The TTC is unsafe. I use the TTC every year. Been using it all my life. It's safer than hell. You know, many of you people are using TTC all the time. You know, do you feel threatened when you use it? No. You know, it's ludicrous. They want to fear mong you so they can keep pushing the car agenda. Keep pushing the vehicles. Keep pushing private vehicles. All these vehicles with one person in it. Congestion off the streets. Because they don't want to take a bus because they're entitled. They're entitled. They're entitled to fuck up humanity for the 99%. You know? They don't care. You know? You know, if you look, look there's a good meme out. There's a good meme out, and it shows that computers over the years have, you know, because during the technology got smaller. Many things got smaller, you know? Different things. You know, stereos, equipment, whatever. But, you know, cars got bigger. SUVs. It's not necessary, you know? But you know, that's how it goes. You know, because you gotta push that industry. You know, they don't talk about how much tire and brake dust goes into the environment. You know, how much rubber particles and asbestos particles off the brakes goes into the environment, off the roads, into the ditches, into the water, into the streams. They don't talk about that, do they? You know, did you ever think about that? Have you ever thought about that? You know? The police aren't here to protect you. They don't care about anything, about you. If they did, they'd be arresting the politicians. That causes problem. You know? Doug Ford gets money and then doesn't use it. You know? He gets a budget from the federal government and then doesn't use it for health care, for education. He sits on the money. You know? And health care is going to hell in Canada. And it shouldn't be. We should be having better health care now than five years ago, not worse. You know? You know, it takes forever to get appointments. And you go for one test and they can't find the problem. But then you gotta go back to your doctor and then they gotta try something else and get something else to do. Instead of keeping you in the hospital until they figure out the problem, you know, they, they, they keep the problem going for years. You know? There's a problem here. People need to have adequate health treatment you know, in, in a reasonable time frame. A reasonable time frame. Yeah. So, anyway, I think we're going to wrap this up. We've been here since uh, 11 this morning. And um, I'm getting tired. My, my, my head and my neck is so, so sore, it's just killed me. I can't turn my head hardly at all, it just hurts too much. I can't tilt my head to go. Home. So, laying down hurts. I have so many different health issues. I'm trying to get medical assistance in dying. I spoke to my second medical assistance in dying doctor last Friday, and he's okay to. So it goes back to the first one to make sure that, you know, whether really they've done everything to look into my pain. And I've already been to the pain clinic and diagnosed with chronic pain, and there's nothing they can do because I have severe IBS and can't take painkillers. So I have to deal with the pain every day. I'm tired of it. Too many years of it. Too many years. Many people are considering me, though, because of poverty. And we don't want to use me to fear monger because me is. Made is necessary, and it's a separate issue. And if you got rid of me, people would still have to fight against poverty. They'd still have to fight against homelessness, and they'd still have to fight for better support services. So those that use me to fear monger, they deflect the, the attention off of poverty because all of a sudden people goes, "Well, what's me? 
What's medical assistance in dying? All of a sudden you're off the topic of poverty, right? So what's wrong when they do that? Because then we have people with mental health issues that are disabled. You have to believe in the government so to kill them, and they're already stressed out, it causes them more stress, and which leads to other health issues, like you know, gastrointestinal issues, ulcers, you know, sleep, uh, uh, sleep problems, disorders, you know, anxiety, you know, depression, you know, it, it leads to all these things where people fear monger. People shouldn't fear monger, people shouldn't be allowed to fear mongers. You know, made and poverty are two separate issues. And we'll remain so, always. Thank you very much for listening to us today. And we hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah.